Porcelain, a Chinese invention that changed what we know and think of as art. A prized commodity that was traded along the Silk Road and introduced the word China to the world. And the reason that a remote Chinese town was put on the map. This is Jing De Zhen. Around a thousand years ago, a Chinese emperor with a penchant for porcelain bestowed this small town with an extraordinary honour, allowing it to be the namesake of his rule, Jingda. Now, that emperor's rule may not have lasted, but he had a good eye. The prestige of Jingda Zhen and its porcelain is world renowned. But why? I'm here to find out. This is Discovering China, and I'm Helen Bentley. As white as jade, as bright as a mirror, as thin as paper, as sweet sounding as a chime stone. Almost every civilization may have had pottery, but nowhere else had Chinese porcelain. The success of Jingda Zhen is in fact linked to a village not so far away. Kaolin is the fine white clay essential to making porcelain. Its name comes from the hilly village from which it was mined, Gaoling. This raw material was to be integral to the large pieces that were produced in this area. The blue and white porcelain of the Yuan Dynasty period was to change the fortune of Jingda Zhen. These striking large pieces won the favour of Mongol rulers and for over 600 years, the kilns at Jingda Zhen were placed under imperial supervision. It was a national treasure to be protected. This piece of Yuan Dynasty blue and white porcelain is just one of around 300 in known existence. For a long time, porcelain only came in one colour. When the blue dye that you see here arrived on caravans from the Middle East, it literally broke the mould. In 2005, another one of these pieces was sold at auction for a whopping 14 million British pounds. It's no wonder that this one is behind safety glass. But it did get me to thinking, wouldn't it be absolutely smashing if I tried to make one here where they were first made? While ceramic centers in other parts of China tended to specialize in certain shapes or styles, Jingda Zhen was known for its sheer variety, with production spanning all categories of fine china, the most famous of which were blue and white, rice pattern, vermeil rose, and color glaze. Walking these streets, you would be hard pushed not to run into somewhere not in some way linked to porcelain. British historian Joseph Needham called Jingda Zhen the first industrialized city in the world, and for good reason. Over the past millennium, the whole ceramics process here has been divided into 72 stages, each with dedicated specialists, making it very likely to be the first place in the world to use a division of labor that we see on factory lines today. I'm going to jump forward a few steps and start with throwing or shaping this lump of prepared clay, but I'm going to have a hand, casual. <laughs> now, it might look easy, but it's extremely precise. And even if you're off, even just slightly at this stage, then it will cause your shape to be really squiffy at the end. I'll give it a go. OK, like this. Got it. Masters like this gentleman here who's helping me Mate. take Oh, sorry, they take years, decades, even their whole life, oh, to get things just right. Well, it's not too bad. <laughs> Today, those skills are on show for tourists, but they were once national secrets. The imperial kilns here in Jingda Zhen were established to ensure just that. 
Nowadays, when we think of technology, we might think of AI, but porcelain was once the height of innovation and its IP was to be protected. Any unwanted pieces would be smashed and buried in the ground and those discarded fragments are today helping ceramic historians piece together the story of porcelain. As ceramics have been made here for over a thousand years, it will come as no surprise that the patterns reflect the time in which they were made. During the Mongol rule, for example, or the Yuan dynasty, the patterns reflected the nomadic boldness and imagination of the ruling class. But they still retained that characteristic abstract brushwork stroke of China. Now I'm here with Mr. Ma, who's helping me to design my pot. Porcelain produced in Jingdezhen was exported overseas on a huge scale. The scenes were Western buyers first and often only exposure to this exotic land and wealthy Europeans would order porcelain painted with their family heralds. Today it's less about take and more about give as foreign ceramicists come here to develop their own practice. I've always considered that porcelain and ceramics is culture. People can understand what, what is China and who is Chinese and what they're like. And most important, I think, is that I make, I joke and say, uh, someone asked me why I like living in China. And I say, well, Americans like to collect guns and um, Chinese like to collect teacups. Uh, so it's, cer ceramics and porcelain is a peaceful thing and something, that's something which is important to share with the world. So the time has come for me to collect my piece from the kiln. Now, I have to admit, I took a bit of a shortcut here, and this is an electric kiln, which was not available back in the day. And my final piece, well, I'm happy with it. But with the technological advances like this, and with porcelain not being the secret it was, how is Jingda Jen adapting? It's no secret that by the end of the 20th century, Jingdezhen had lost its competitive edge. It became clear that just like the craft itself, this millennial porcelain city had to modernise. One recent measure came in August with a vision to make the city into a pilot zone that would secure Jingdezhen's reputation as a centre for ceramics culture and innovation. What does that mean and what can we expect? Sienchi 代表实际上它还蕴含着这个丰富的这种文化精神第三个我觉得简真正这种陶瓷文化体现了一种海纳百川的博大的胸怀所以简真正自古有句话叫匠从八方来气神天下走它内在的这种文化精神也体现了中国的优秀传统文化的这样一种文化自信The vision for Jing the Jen it seems is to look towards the future but to never forget its past For over a thousand years the products that have been produced here have in part help shape the East and West dialogue. It's a city of creativity and collaboration. It's a case of those who make together work well together. I'll see you next time.